Welcome to the Math Ed Podcast. My name is Sam Otten from the University of Missouri. And with me today is Holly Lynn Lee, who's a distinguished professor of mathematics and statistics education in the Department of STEM Education at North Carolina State University. She's also a 2020 fellow of the American Statistical Association. Holly Lynn, thanks so much for talking to me. Yeah, you're welcome. So Holly Lynn comes from sort of a statistics education background. And so I'm, I've been eager to talk more about stats education. I have some friends that have dug deep into stats education. It's not really my area, but I think it's a ever more important area kind of in our math ed world or adjacent to our math ed world. You've done some research looking closely at AP statistics, these courses that happen sort of in upper level high school. I wonder if you can just share with us, what was it that got you interested? Why did you decide to take a thorough look at AP statistics? Uh, Yeah, so I really began this back in 2018. At that time, there was really very little research within the context of AP statistics, really understanding kind of what happens in those courses. This course sits at this interesting intersection between research and educational efforts that are happening at um, the secondary level in mathematics education and teacher education, as well as curricular designs and educational efforts and research happening at that intro statistics level at college. I, I thought that it was really time for both uh, interest groups to really understand what's happening in that AP stats course so that we could best help it move into the future. Yeah. And so you've actually published a few things, and I want to be able to talk about both of these um, that are related to AP statistics and the teachers of that course and what's kind of going on in that course. So I want to lay out both of these articles. Um, So you and Harrison in 2021, you published Trends in Teaching Advanced Placement Statistics, Results from a National Survey. And that's in the Journal of Statistics and Data Science Education. And then more recently, you had another one come out with the whole team of folks. um, And it's a look into the AP statistics classroom. Who teaches it? And what aspects of statistics do they emphasize? And that's in the journal Chance. Both of those have at the root this national survey. Um, So I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit about how that national survey uh, happened and what you put in there. Just get us a little familiarized with that survey. Yeah. So first of all, this was um, not a funded project. So this didn't happen from any kind of a grant project. But um, I modeled the questions after a survey that was done by Andy Zeffler and colleagues um, that was aimed at intro statistics faculty. And um, they called it the statistics teaching inventory. Um, and that was done in 2012. And so I started with that survey in, the, in their results and then really looked at the college board documents around AP statistics, as well as different trends in the use of technology and um, use of data that was happening in those intro stats classes at the college level. So more updated kind of trends there and tried to create a survey that captured all of those different aspects um, so that, you know, we could kind of get a snapshot of like, what is, what, what's actually happening right now in, in that. And, you know, finding AP statistics teachers was probably one of the most difficult aspects of that <laughs> process because, um, you know, there is no list of everybody who teaches AP statistics that's readily available. So we, we distribute it to people in the community through particularly my contacts at the American Statistical Association and the, that group of people who work with statistics, um, AP stats teachers. Um, the college board has their listserv. So we, we advertise the survey in that listserv. We also, um, made, we wanted to make sure that invitations were sent to people in all, all of the states. So we just did some downright searching and trying to find teachers um, at schools um, in all 50 states that we could actually send the invitation to. And so there was no, you know, set population um, (laughs) database that we were actually working from, um, but we tried to get it out to as many people as possible. Um, And, you know, we ended up getting um, over, I think it was like 570 that initially went into the survey, but We made sure that we asked them, are you currently teaching AP statistics Mm -hmm. or did you teach it last year? And if you answered yes, then you were eligible. But if you answered no, we didn't want them participating because we felt like their memory on some of the things we were asking would be too far ago. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. And I definitely know the legwork that goes into these sorts of surveys. So that's definitely an accomplishment. I'm, I'm glad you've been able to publish some things from that. And that's where I want to go next with the survey is uh, I'm curious what you found in that survey. And particularly, you had some questions about who are the teachers that are teaching this AP statistics. So what are some of the things that you found there? 
Yeah. So, you know, the response, the people who responded, so we know we have a convenient sample of people who, who responded to this survey, the vast majority of them taught in public schools. Um, but really interestingly is that about 80% of them held a master's degree or higher. So these are highly educated teachers and about half of them had taken two or less statistics classes in their background. Uh, you know, thinking about their range of experience, we had a huge range of the number of years that they had taught high school math. So we asked them two questions. How long have you been teaching um, high school mathematics? And how many times have you taught AP stats? <laughs> um, and there was just a huge range in both directions on that. But a big takeaway is that we had a clear group, um, about a third of our sample, um, were teachers that clearly had gotten assigned to teach AP statistics early in their career and then just kept teaching it. And they had taught it many, 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 many times. And they were also highly experienced math teachers. And then there were also, you know, a, a group of teachers who were relatively young in their teaching career um, and had already been assigned to teach AP statistics and, you know, had only taught it maybe nine or less times, so le less than 10 times. So that was like our biggest two groups. But I, I don't know, when we, when we did the scatter plot on this, it was just kind of all over the place. And one big thing to, to think about is that you know, so there's these career AP statistics teachers, but there's also these teachers that are very experienced math teachers that later in their career get assigned to teach AP statistics and they're new. To, so teaching that course is very new to them, um, even though they're really experienced. Related to their t um, the number of statistics classes that they've taken, we found a, an interesting association that would probably come to no surprise that the more statistics courses a teacher had taken, the more prepared they felt to teach the class. So um, those that, that had not taken many classes um, felt less prepared <laughs> in general, and those that had taken more, more statistics classes felt more prepared. And we were not surprised at that, but it's nice when that kind of comes out um, in the data. Yeah, and that is something to think about when you are, if a school is deciding who is going to do this, you know, you might be balancing like, well, experience in the classroom and experience in our school context, but then you also might be balancing it on what's their statistical knowledge, what's their statistics comfort level. And sometimes those not, might not be the same thing. Right, exactly. Especially more experienced teachers who went through teacher preparation programs um, where they weren't required to take statistics classes in those preparation programs. So. Mm -hmm. The survey also has items that are about the teaching and the content focus like of the AP statistics. So I wonder what you found when you did ask about teaching or if you asked about the, the type of statistics that they focus on. Yeah, so I mean, we asked some general questions about how they structured their class time. You know, there was a small amount of time dedicated to practices like reviewing homework, uh, you know, having students work individually on problem sets or taking assessments. Um, we found large variability in the amount of time that teachers um, reported spending on whole group activities, such as lecture demonstrations, as well as large variability in the reporting of use of group work for doing activities and projects. And so those were the two largest categories, but there was huge variability in them. And so it just seems that, that there, are, there are teachers who, um, who spend a lot of time doing that whole class lecture, um, but then there's this other group of teachers that are favoring the group work. And the college board in their documentations really tries to emphasize that group work is preferred <laughs> and that, that, there, that this should be a very highly active course. It seems like there are some of our teachers that are doing that, but, but it, not many. So there's potential there. Um, one of the other really interesting things is that teachers primarily use graphing calculators. So that is like the major tool that is being used. So they do report using tools like spreadsheets or different statistical software or applets, but they report using it in a demonstration mode. So the teacher is the only one touching that technology tool, not the students. And I was personally disappointed because a lot of my research has been on the use of technology in classrooms um, that only 10 to 20% of the teachers reported ever having students using those, the, you know, having their hands on tools other than graphing calculators to analyze data. 
um, which is pretty small amount of classrooms where, where students are getting that opportunity. They really report that they depend on the graphing calculator because that's what's allowed on the AP test. <laughs> so they feel very constrained about that. And um, they just say they don't have time to incorporate these other tools and they feel like they have to teach the students also to be able to do all of these problems on the graphing calculator. I mean, some of them had access problems and, you know, felt that they didn't use these tools because they weren't comfortable with them, but it was more about time and the AP, the structure of the AP curriculum and the test. Yeah, that, that might open up kind of an interesting can of worms, right? Like, are there some business <laughs> arrangements for why certain calculators are allowed on the test or whatever? I mean, my first thought yeah. is, you know, I'm not surprised. I know the graphing calculators are kind of dominant in educational settings, but it's kind of silly when you think about it because it's like, oh yeah, in AP stats, oh yeah, they're really using graphing calculators, you know, just like right. the statisticians do. That's right. That's right. That's right. I, I, yes. I mean, you know, statisticians haven't touched graphing calculators in years, nor are they really used in introductory statistics classes in college. <laughs> no, it's like, it's very much like a contrivance that's only, it's a remnant right. now just in high schools. It's not really anywhere. Right, else. right, right. You know, they do, they do talk about using real data. But, you know, if you if you think about the use of the graphing calculator, along with the questions we ask them about the kind of data that they use, you can understand why they didn't report using very big data. <laughs> you know, so, no so kidding, we asked yeah. them like, you know, yeah, we asked them the kind of, you know, how large the data sets were. And they were very they were relatively small. Um, mm -hmm. But if you're using the graphing calculator, then that makes sense. Um, and they did they did report that they tried to have their students use real data. But it really isn't real data like in the real world, like what data looks like in the real world. So it might have a real context, it might not be made up, you know, so mm -hmm. it's real in that way, but it doesn't really represent the kind of data that students, if, if they take a course in, if they deal with anything in data in college, it's not going to look like the way it does in AP statistics. Mm -hmm. Now you worked with, uh, so you were lead author, but then Vescalis, Stokes and Harrison in, in the chance article, you mm -hmm. Reported on some of the nuances that came out from the survey, but you also added on this interview dimension. I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit about those interviews and then what were some of the insights that you and your team gained from talking to some of the teachers? We interviewed 18 teachers um, after the completion of the survey, and it really was um, some of it was confirmatory. So they were able to give us insights into their day to day routines, and it, it was very similar to what we saw on the survey. But we also heard these really interesting stories from a few teachers of really interesting things that they do in their classrooms and the ways that they use technology. So by doing the sur by doing just the survey only, we were, we got, we got this picture, but the interviews helped us confirm it, but also gave us a few cases that showed other interesting things that were happening. We, we asked all of them, for example, a, a question around what, so describe for us like your favorite task, like what's your favorite task? And their, their favorite tasks all had something to do with like doing something hands-on with data collection. Many of us probably would have heard of some of these tasks that they described. Um, they got them from going to the AP stats workshops or by going to a conference or reading it in a journal um, from the math teacher. And so, you know, they had these favorite tasks. And so we got these glimmers of insight that teachers do want to be able to use these types of activities, but it doesn't, it's not what the typical day looks like, you know, they, you know, they were able to tell us more about their professional growth and just the journeys that they went on. Some of them talking about, you know, I'm the only one in my school and I'm at a small private school and like nobody else wanted to teach this. And so I kind of got stuck with it and I'm doing the best I can. And, you know, I'm learning along with the students and other teachers who really identified as, yeah, you know, I've been teaching this class for 15 years and I kind of identify myself as a stats teacher. I'm known in the school school as the stats teacher. And so, you know, th I think the teachers go on these different journeys and um, they really, some of them have a community, feel like they're part of a larger community to help them um, along their, in their journey and others don't. Um, and so we, we need to help this, this group of teachers find their way and to connect with one another and with resources so that they can improve their practices. Mm -hmm. Well, some of those ideas about helping teachers link up and find that community maybe goes into my next question, because I was wondering if you think about listeners of this podcast, if they're from a school that offers AP statistics, or maybe there's mm -hmm. even some AP statistics teachers who are listening, is there some advice or guidance that you might offer 
if they're thinking like over the summer or if they're heading into next year for AP statistics, what would, what would your advice be? I mean, I, I think that there's a lot of really good resources at the American Statistical Association, um, specifically for teachers um, of statistics, and it doesn't have to be um, a lesson for AP stats. So one of the things I think AP stats teachers need to realize is that um, they can find good resources, and it won't be labeled as an AP statistics lesson, <laughs> you know, and mm. but by finding out what what is actually happening um, in colleges near them, you know, reaching out and talking with um, faculty that teach those intro stats classes at colleges near them, so that they can get to get a sense of well, what does stats class, you know, I mean, my students are getting college credit for this class. What does it look like if they would have taken it in college? <laughs> you know, um, I think that they'll, they'll, they'll see that there's a lot of resources. For example, um, the U.S. COTS um, website um, and COSWEB, the Consortium for the Advancement of Undergraduate Statistics Education. That website is not labeled an AP stats website, but it's all about the vast majority of the information there is about teaching introductory statistics. And it's a great resource um, getting, if you're not, if they're not already in the AP stats community of the college board listserv, getting in that community and that discussion board, because that's going to connect them. And lots of the teachers talked about that the best professional development that they had as an AP stats teacher was volunteering to do the, the AP stats reading where they, they spend a week reading exam responses and thinking about how to um, how to grade those and they meet a large community and there's Facebook communities and Twitter communities around these groups of people that go to these readings that's a good way to kind of get involved now is that volunteer volunteer or is that paid volunteer? no it's paid it's okay paid. Great. good yes yes <laughs> Well, volunteer to be considered. And then if you're chosen, you actually get paid. <laughs> yeah, well, that's great. That sounds like a lot of good stuff. Um, and we can link to some of that, I think, in the show notes. Oh, sure. Yeah, I can make sure I get you some of those links. And selfishly, as a mathematics teacher educator, I also wonder if maybe you have advice like for teacher education programs or for teacher educators and how we might think about it in supporting AP statistics or statistics education. Yeah, so uh, I'm really glad you asked that question because um, a lot of us spend a lot of our time doing uh, involved in math teacher education. And, you know, we we have to change our programs so that our students are taking, our pre-service teachers are taking more statistics and in their methods courses, they're learning the pedagogy because it's not just AP stats, but statistics and data science are really going to be infused throughout the curriculum. You know, it already is a little bit with statistics and data science is coming down the pike. It's going to fall in the hands of math teachers. um, And we've got to get those math teachers prepared um, and feeling more confident about it. And so, you know, spending more time um, dedicated to teaching teachers how to teach really hard concepts like a sampling distribution in your methods courses so that they kind of understand the nuances of that and how students might misunderstand it. And honestly, how some of our pre-service teachers might have misunderstandings about that as well would be really, really useful. My guest is Holly Lynn Lee from NC State. And I do want to ask you a few more questions. Uh, we'll kind of open it up a little bit more personally here. I want okay. to go back to um, when you were doing your own doctoral studies. Just tell us a little bit about where that was and who you worked with. Sure. Um, I was at the University of Virginia um, and I worked under Joe Garofalo, uh, graduated in 2000. So it's easy to count from (laughs) from there. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, um, But yeah, so I I worked um, in the Center for Technology and Teacher Education there and and really learned a lot from Joe and the other graduate students that um, were in the program with me on thinking about how to how to help teachers think about using technology. And that has been a huge impact um, in my career in designing curriculum and and technology tools for teachers. Yeah, and it feels like NC State is a good place to end up because I I mean it seems like NC State is kind of known for being leading thinkers about technology and math education. Yeah, yeah, it's a fun place to be. And I think that it, it, my personal interest in the use of technology fits well within the the mission of NC State. Now, I do want to ask you though if you had an alternative sort of life where you hadn't gone into math education and stats education, is there something else that you could have imagined doing instead? 
it's really interesting. So I love what I do. I really feel like I'm very much of an educator and I probably would have been involved in some type of education, something or another, you know, all along. Um, so if it wasn't math or stats, it might have been something related to theater or dancing, something in the entertainment you know, I, I was always a big puppeteer and dancer and theater. And, and so I probably would have done something along those lines and, you know, used my education, um, bu- built my, my, my understanding of being an educator in that domain. Yeah, I have a one year old daughter and she likes Elmo and she likes the whole Sesame Street sort of gang right now. And what I enjoy watching with it is I just try to think about the actual mechanics of the puppeteer work and how they have uh-huh. to set up the set and how they're like doing it. So for me, it is kind of also entertaining to watch, but I'm just right. really trying to get a behind the scenes sort of inference to it. Yeah. So I probably would have done something like that, but I really do like what I do. So it's hard to imagine at this point, a different career path. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's been great talking to you and thanks so much for your analysis on AP statistics and thanks for spending some time with us. Yeah. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Sam.